Welcome to Next Thermal's presentation on how to target heat to reach higher performance. I am Jeff Wheeler, Vice President of Operations for Next Thermal. We are very excited to present this to you, and it's our hope that you'll find these topics informative. Sustainability initiatives are leading innovations in materials processing. System buyers, such as Director of Engineering for a major consumer packaged goods producer, are now demanding that the total cost of ownership of the machine includes the definition of the energy usage. In many processes that use thermal energy, the cost of creating the energy is a lead operating cost in the production process. Using smart electric heating methods compared to natural gas or hot oil, the application can be targeted for best results and control more consistently. This is part four of a four-part series that covers a review of the parts of an electrically heated system, the durability, and how to increase the efficiency of an electric heating system. And finally, the review of a case study of a high-performance heater. This session will start with a review of what we mean by high-performance when we talk about the use of electric heating tools. After that, we'll transition into a case study of how a simple choice can impact performance. What do we mean when we say higher performance? Let's take a minute to define this in terms of heating systems. Less cost means to focus on the total cost of operation of the heater in the tool saving energy and limiting heat energy waste, installing reliable solutions at lower service costs and allow for more uptime, supporting lower counts as service parts and stock, fast delivery rather than spare parts inventory. It consumes capital and ends up getting lost anyway. Faster production means higher processing speeds, which allow for more production per unit of machine time. Lower scrap or defect product means more revenue per production run and more consistent output that can provide lower risk to package product for recall or spoilage. Compared to other methods of creating thermal energy, electric heating is unique in that by definition it is 100% efficient. With a range of heater sizes available today and the design flexibility that electric allows, it's possible to target where and how much thermal energy is needed for highest performance of the final system. All these points are topics we will touch on in the presentation. Part one of this presentation, we reviewed the various parts that form a thermal process and the roles of each. In part two, we reviewed the topic of durability and the influences that we can make in the design to improve service life. Part three, we reviewed the topic of efficiency and the design choices that can be made to affect the energy usage as well as the product uniformity. Now we will move into the case study on a simple change that can add a big improvement in the performance. As we noted in the efficiency topic, thermal conductivity is a big deal in how fast a system can move thermal energy to replace lost energy. If you know what you're trying to achieve, there might be alternatives that are possible to get to a better engineer's solution. What if we saw the material choices not as black and white, but in color? With what is available today, is there a version that might be better suited for higher performance in thermal conductivity even if that meant maybe a lower maximum rated surface temperature, what would be the impact to efficiency? To answer that, we should start with a review of how an electrically heated process consumes electricity. In this graph, we see two different heaters being used in a form field and seal system. One, a standard heater with stainless steel 321 sheet. One is an e-heat heater. Both heaters were almost matched to produce the target wattage. Both heaters produced the same liquid package product and were installed in weight match jaws. Is 500 watts equal to 500 watts? Yes, in capability. No, in terms of energy consumed. To understand this, let's have a quick refresh on PID control systems. Electricity is charged based on kilowatt hours from the power company. PID control loops tell the controller to turn on and off the flow of electricity as thermal energy is needed in the system to maintain set point. When power is off, no energy is consumed. So one key to a more efficient system will use less power on time to maintain set temperature. The good product should meet the need in solving a problem. In our case, the need is to improve the system efficiency and to lower energy consumption. The ECDU is an easy to install. In our case, it needs to fit the current jaw design as a replacement heater and not be over-designed with features that customer does not value, but designed to perform reliably and to a purpose. This was the key element that we could focus on. And so, we come to the choices that have been made for the customer. Previously, we talked about Foyer's Law of Thermal Conduction. 
materials that are used for high corrosion resistance have lower free electrons, which also means they have lower thermal conductivity. Switch style cartridge heaters were first patented by Watlow in 1954, using the stainless steel alloys developed in the 1930s. Since then, many innovations have been made in material science to create new alloys that are designed to perform in specialized ways. If you know what you're trying to achieve, there may be alternates that are possible to get to a better engineered solution. What if we did not assume that a heater needed to operate at 800 degrees C and considered a material with a higher thermal conductivity instead? Say, for example, a material that is service limit of 315 degrees C or 650 degrees Fahrenheit. What could be the impact on performance? This is actual data from a warm, fill, and seal packaging system comparing two cartridge heaters. The blue line represents a standard heat construction with stainless steel 321 sheet. The red line represents the unique e heat design. The number of pulses of power needed to maintain set points higher in the blue system than the red system, as well as the actual consumption of power represented by the area under line, is higher than the red. And as you can see, since the measured on time of the power was less, it consumed 25% less energy for the same operation. The only limitation to the product was the surface temperature could not exceed 650 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat product with its higher level of thermal conductivity can also have more uniformity as well on the ceiling surface. Many have seen isobars, otherwise known as heat pipes, used to move heat to colder areas. They work well in moving thermal energy. However, the disadvantage that we have seen is they cannot locally increase the thermal energy to compensate for heat losses which distributed wattage can do. Others have used highly conductive jaw materials such as Berlin Brie copper grates and plating. Not only are they expensive, but they wear and cleaning are concerns. This comparison shows the temperature profile change of the ceiling surface with replacing the standard heater with the EE version, reducing the variation from 16 degrees C to 10 degrees C. No internal wattage distribution was modeled to flatten the curve this is a direct material comparison with identical boundary conditions assigned to each. Shown here is a display that we host in our booth at trade shows, which shows a demonstration of the comparison of the standard cartridge heater and the heat heater. In the display, we have two packaging jaws offset from each other. These are being powered to control temperature and are dripping water onto the jaws to act as a heat loss. There are two meters in the base that records the total kilowatt hours used to heat the jaws. The top meter on the left is the heat product. The lower left meter is recording the energy used by the standard 321 product. Each jaw has match wattage and weight to make comparison equal. As shown in the meters, there's a 30% reduction in power needed to maintain set point given this environment. To help with removal of the heater, we can apply an anti-seize coating on the surface of the heater as well. This coating prevents galling or oxidation from dissimilar surfaces, which can make removal easier. It's also noteworthy to point out that if drilling is ever needed to clear the hole, it is faster and easier to drill this alloy than the stainless steel sheet that is standard. Both options speed up the tool repair to get it back into service. It is hoped that our conversation about what efficiency means in the world of heaters, the various parts of the system and how they interact to get work done, as well as some design thoughts to get the most out of the heater and tool were beneficial to you. On behalf of the team at Next Thermal, Thank you for watching this video series. If you have any questions, please contact Nets Thermal. We will be happy to help.